So hello, ladies and gentlemen. This webinar is part of the CTO Confessions webinar series, and it's brought to you by the one and only IT Labs, providing technology leaders with purpose-driven development teams for high performance, innovation, and productivity. What more could you want? Please think of us like tech leaders' favorite tool in the toolbox. We make your job easier and less stressful. And your host today is moi, TC Gill. IT Labs Chief Talking Officer, and I'm speaking from the UK, Londinium, the land of tea and biscuits, as we were saying earlier. And in this episode, we're going to talk about nature and nurture, the echoes of our, our abilities, which is louder, which, which, one of, which one of them makes you, you. And our expert guest today is going to share her wisdom, knowledge on the subject. She's a trained psychologist, She's the Chief Human Resources Officer at IT Labs, and like me, shares a very practical passion around how, who we are and how we are shaped as human beings. So let's not delay any further. Come on down, Frazina. Welcome. Welcome to the webinar. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us. Today, we have nature versus nurture debate, which is one of the oldest philosophical issues within psychology. So what exactly is all about. Nature refers to hereditary factors that influence who we are, from our physical appearance to our personality characteristics. Nurture instead refers to all the environmental factors that impact who we are, including our early childhood experiences, how we were raised, our social relationships, and our surrounding culture. So today's question is, do inherited traits or life experiences play a greater role in shaping our personality? What do you think, TC? Well, what do we think? Oh, let's, let's ask the audience. So we have a poll here ready let's for Let's ask you. the audience. Yeah. So um, here we go. And, and while people are putting their stuff, so what do I think? I think, my feeling is, it's, it's, a, it's a heady mix between the two. That's my feeling, you know? Um, mm -hmm. and oh, we got nature's kind of winning out. Yeah, I'll display the poll in a second, but it looks mm -hmm. looking nature's coming out strong, both is coming out strong as well. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got a few something else's as well. Oh, interesting, yeah, which is quite interesting. Um, so, uh, so whoever, uh, whoever's put in something else, if you feel brave, uh, please share what you think that is because I'm kind of curious. And and okay, I think that's kind of settled down. So thank you for your votes. Um, I'll end that and I'll share now that with everybody, share results. So there we go. It's looking like uh, both wins out, which is kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. Interesting results from the voting. So let's explore the topic in uh, more details. But for start, let's do a little bit in, uh, let's go a little bit in the history uh, of nature and nurture. So some philosophers, such as Plato and Descartes, suggest that certain things are inborn or that they occur naturally regardless of, envir and of envir environmental influences. Other well-known thinkers, such as John Locke, maybe you have heard about him as well, believe in what is known as tabula rasa, which suggests that the mind begins as a blank state. Anyway, there are two diametric approaches regarding this topic. First one comes from the empiricist that believes that all or most behaviors and characteristics result from learning. Behaviorism is a good example of a theory rooted in empiricism. Most famous one is John Watson, who believed that people could be trained to do and become anything regardless of their genetic background. He says, give me a dozen healthy infants, well-formed, and my own specified world to bring them up in, and I'll guarantee to take anyone at uh, random and train him to be any type of specialist. Uh, I might select doctor, lawyer, artist, merchant chief, and yes, even bigger man, thief, regardless of his talents, tendencies, abilities, vocation, and race of his ancestors. On the other hand, 
1859, Charles Darwin published his well-known book, Origin of Species. This book was probably the most influential work of the 19th century. The implication of this work was the man, uh, that the man evolves from his primates. The theory of evolution, this theory caused a controversy of its own. What Darwin said, he said, through natural selection, organisms pass on their genes to subsequent generations, certain abilities become inbuilt into the genetic code. So many abilities that develop in humans are biologically based rather than purely products of learning. The science of the mind psychology led us to the main question about the impact our, our genetics has on us. Do we have free will to decide our destiny? or it's predetermined. So on the next slide, here are some questions related to this topic that I would like to discuss with you. So let's try to answer them without thinking a lot. I will start with the first one. Do you believe criminals are made by nature? What do you think? TC? Will you help me with the answer? Sure. Yes. Yeah. So we got a uh, we got a no uh, from here. Oh, we got a yes. Uh, some criminals are made by nature. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. I, hopefully, that's not by seeing me and thinking that's the case. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, yeah, we got uh -huh. we got uh, uh, two yeses so far, and uh, and a no. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. The next one, what do you think shapes the personality, nature or nurture? Mm. We already got this question, so maybe. Both, mm -hmm. nurture, mm -hmm. nurture. Uh, yeah, we've got a few both. So we've got a, uh, a nurture in there as well. Yeah. Okay, the next one. Is the outcome of a child's behavior caused by parenting skill, <laughs> nature or nurture? Oh yeah, I, I kind of cringe then, you know, parenting skills. I've got a daughter myself and I think. Uh, and what um, do you think, TC? I think it's, uh, we have a huge impact on, on the child. Um, the, but I do think it's a bit of both, you know, um, mm -hmm. depending on how strong my nurturing is. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so we, we have a, a, a nature nurture, I think parenting skill and nurture. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I think that's a good one, Anna. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's interesting that we don't get taught how to be, become parents, or at least mm -hmm. we don't here in the UK. Uh, okay, let's move to the next one. Is religion nature or nurture? Ooh, I think, I, yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to let uh, nature. Ooh, all right, Sophia, nurture. Yeah. Uh, we've got a nature and nurture, nurture to nurture. Uh, so as they're coming in, I, I, I share my opinion. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so I, I, I definitely think it's nurture because I was brought up religious and, um, uh -huh. and uh, yeah, uh, yes, I, I don't, I don't think we're born uh, with a, with a religion. Um, but yeah, that's an interesting perspective. Okay. So yeah, na there's a nature there as well. Cool. Okay, and the last one, what is more influential, nurture, or nur nature or nurture? Ooh. Oh, nature, nature. We've got a double nature there. Uh, nurture, uh, both. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think. I so mean, we have uh, different answers. Yeah, we have a good mix here. So th this is interesting. It's getting people thinking, hopefully, around, you mm -hmm. know, where, where do things sit, you know? So where it'll be. I, I think for me, uh, the influence is, it depends, you know, on the context. Con as they say, context is everything, you know? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. mm -hmm. Okay, let's move forward and see the answers. Cool. So as for the first question, from many researchers and studies, we have found that criminals can be born that way. Wow. But I must stress here that there are also studies that shown that uh, criminals can be nurtured. So it's a kind of mixed yeah. answer. So uh, as for the second question, nature and nurture tend to have equal participation in personality. Cool. 
yeah. as uh, in regards to the parenting skill. Although there is a triangle between nature, nurture, and parenting skills, seems that parenting skills will almost always play a very crucial role in a child's behavior. So dear parents or parents-to-be, it's up to you how you will raise your children since the parenting skills are so um, influential or so uh, they have a very huge uh, influence. Cool. As for the religion, humans are hardwired to believe in something they cannot perceive, whether that can be God or some other concept they have no direct experience with. Ooh, wow. But people are more likely to believe something if their parents, friends, and peers do as well. And if they heard about it from a young age. So probably is more nurture than nature. Yeah. And as we have said before, um, what is more influential, nurture or nature or nurture, in many cases, it's always equal. So thank you everyone for the answers on the questions. Let's move forward. So we can see that nature and nurture have great impact on our development and this debate is continuous, I would say. At this point, I have another question for you. Listen carefully. So, are the baby's first step a result of the, his heritage or from the influence of the environment and from the experience he is getting? What do you think? Anybody? We uh, got a few a heritage experience coming up. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Anything, any, any other input? That's interesting. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, heritage. What do you think? Yeah, I, I, again, I think it's a mix and it depends on kind of the context. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, environment, uh, you know, um, inf yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't see the pop-ups about answering the questions. <laughs> um, Okay. Uh, yeah, just just add them to the um, add them to the uh, chat. The, these these ones, Sonia, are just for uh, 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 to put in the chat at the moment. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Cool. So okay. psychologists concluded that for doing our basic activities like walking and sitting, heritage and age matters. But for more specific activities that require special skill, environment, and repeated practice are needed. In regards to the nature debate, uh, there is one very popular experiment made by the married couple of psychologists, Kellogg, that in the period of nine months were observing Gia, a female chimpanzee at seven and a half months old, and their own nine months old son, Donald. So the name of the experience is Gia and Donald. They had completely identical living conditions. At the end of their experiment, the scientists concluded that Gia was developing better than Donald in her motor functions. She learned to walk faster and use her hands and to signal when she needed to go to the bathroom. Some activities that Donald developed later, Gia wasn't able to do. By the end of the experiment, Donald was more successful because he started to develop speech, mm -hmm, more specific activity, Hence, Donald's possibility for learning was enhanced. No type of effort could have made Gia speak because being a monkey, there was no hereditary human foundation to build on. Speaking about the nurture's debate, nurture is connected to the environment. Our environment, upbringing, and life experiences determine our behavior. So we are nurtured to behave in certain ways. The household and city we grew up, how we were raised by our parents, teachers, and friends, these are environmental factors that determine who we are. Here we have uh, some other experiments that are showing that often identical twins grow up to have very different personalities, skills, and preferences. For example, two children from the same parents who live in the same family may have different environmental experiences. Two people that 
work in the same company may have different experiences. The relationship with parents may differ and that is why may, that's why it may result in different development. But uh, I believe and my personal opinion is that the overall development is the result of the interplay between the nature, nurture, and one additional factor, which is activity. So in psychological literature, like an illustration for what the activity can do to a person and his cautious effort, there are a lot of exper uh, examples, experiments, and uh, one of them is the most mentioned um, is the case of the Helen Keller. So she was blind and deaf from her 19th month, but with intense effort and practice, she learned how to speak and overcome her disabilities and attend the, to higher learning. She finished high school, then university, achieved her master's degree and developed into a writer. Without her activity and coaching how to learn, regardless of her environment, she would have remained isolated in her condition. So uh, this is the interplay with these two, three, with these three factors that is crucial for the overall development of the personality. Uh, as we have seen till now, Today, we know that nature and nurture both help shape our behavior. The question for today's debit is uh, this. Which one has the greater influence on human behavior? So this debate dates at least back as for the early Greeks. They were perhaps the first to debate the nature of faith versus free will in literature. For hundreds of years, humans have been plagued with the question, do we have control over our own destiny or it is preset? What do studies tell us? The development of personality traits is often part of the nature versus nurture debate. People want to know, for example, how children develop their personalities. Managers instead want to know how employees develop skills. Let's check the effect, the effect of nature and environment in these cases. In some situations, children develop personalities or have tendencies towards certain behaviors, such as shyness or aggression, that cannot seem to be explained because neither parent demonstrates the same traits. So in this situation, it can be argued the nature, um, that nature has the main role in development of the child's personality. What we can conclude from the studies, and it's quite optimistic, that um, the studies that have been conducted till now is that we can shape behavior and personality by using the benefits from activity and environment, but we cannot change the genetics. This is possible only in 1% of the cases according to the studies. It's quite interesting, isn't it? So, as you have probably heard along with the nature and nurture debate, there is another debate happening often at the workplace. Skills versus the abilities, abilities versus skills. But uh, first, I have another question for you. A lot of questions. <laughs> Do you know how to cut hair? <laughs> <laughs> That's quite an interesting question, actually. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, no, yes, uh, no idea. <laughs> it, it's quite interesting because over the COVID period, I've given my hair a good go. And uh -huh. uh, not this one, um, but... Uh, uh, I did learn how to do it. So yes and no, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a simple question, but <laughs> one that immediately distinguishes the difference between knowledge, skills, and abilities, right? Mm. These words are often used interchangeably, but what are the differences between them? Most people know how to cut hair, 
The average person that you can stop in the street could tell you that you should cut hair with a pair of scissors, right? Obviously. Most people could go into more advanced detail, perhaps telling you to work on a section at a time or describing how to add layers, for example. But just because someone knows how to cut hair, shouldn't they be trusted to do it? Probably not. Or yes. <laughs> Depends on the situation. <laughs> yes, it depends on the situation. Mm -hmm. So knowledge is an understanding. It's mental or theoretical rather than practical, right? Knowledge can be gleaned from a book. Uh, you can gain knowledge by researching online or maybe visiting some uh, local library. Having knowledge on how to do something does not necessarily mean that you can do it. Even if you understand the steps, and what should happen. The difference between, skill, between a skill and ability is much less obvious than the difference between knowledge and the two other. Mm. In very basic terms, abilities are natural or inbuilt, while skills are learned behaviors. So this is like a simple definition. Mm. In that manner, when cutting hair, you might have an ability to keep your hand steady or cut a straight line, but the skill is what you learned on your hairdressing course. <laughs> cool. Yeah. So speaking about the abilities, ability is an innate characteristic that lays the foundation of skill. We inherit natural abilities from our parents, and while these abilities can be enhanced, you either have it or you do not. Mm. Abilities are enduring. You born with them, and they remain with you. On the other hand, skill differs from ability in that it's not innate. Skills are learned. Skills are developed from an ability after a period of practice. For a skillful performance, a person must practice so that the required abilities are enhanced. Overall, abilities are the building blocks of skill. A group of abilities is usually associated with a specific skill. Continuing with the skills, speaking about the skills, <laughs> Their most common division at the workplace is hard skills and soft skills, right? While certain hard skills are necessary for any position, employers increasingly look for job applicants with certain soft skills. That is because it's generally easier for an employer to train a new employee in a hard skill, for example, in some programming language, than to train an employee in a soft skill. For example, patience. Hard skills are taught skills. They are quantifiable and they are often learned at school, maybe through some certification or at work, for example. Hard skills are specific to each job and are often the basis of job requirement. On the other hand, soft skills are typically interpersonal. They have been called so, uh, people skills or desirable personality, personality traits that revolve around our character, teamwork, communication, or maybe work ethic. Soft skills tend to be transferable between job or industries, but are more difficult to quantify on uh, resume than hard skills. We have some question maybe, or some comment about uh, the soft and hard skill no, not at the moment no uh -huh, um, okay I, okay if, if you have any questions put st stick them into the q a thing and uh, may, mm -hmm. maybe we can answer them here mm -hmm. yeah okay so employees develop hard skills through education and on the job practice while they develop soft skills through various lifelong professional and personal experiences for example marketers listen maya <laughs> can learn marketing techniques and tools by attending a marketing course, course, but they could grow their collaboration skills by participating, for example, in a sport team. So this is like to make, a, uh, to distinguish uh, abilities and skills, hard skills and soft skills. Cool. Hard skills and soft skills are equally important for 
a career. Um, nowadays, a skillful performance is a very popular term at the workplace. So when do we have a skillful performance? We have skillful performance when the skills are well learned, when they are consistent, a skilled employee can perform the test to the same high level time after time, and then the skill became consistent. When the skills are goal directed, goal oriented, an employee will practice skills with a name in mind. And this is very important. For example, improving communication skills to make more contracts, to, be, uh, to, to make an excellent impression at the client. Uh, we talk about skillful performance when the skills are controlled. The skillful employee is in charge, controlling the rate and timing of the skills and when they are efficient and smooth. The skill is performed without any wasted energy and seems to flow. Mm. So actually, while we are on skills then, um, Frasina, uh, mm -hmm. so what, what kind of techniques actually are best a, a best fit for uh, learning skills? Is it kind of uh, teaching or is it kind of coaching? Mm -hmm. mm, interesting question. So uh, TC, I would uh, say that this depends on the task and also on the situation. Uh, for example, if um, some employee, um, uh, if someone should start communicating with the client and uh, maybe it's better first or um, at the beginning to have some training. Hmm. And for example, if we have someone who uh, has to improve uh, his communication skills, maybe it's better to uh, have coaching as a learning method. So yeah. the answer yeah. is depends on the depends. test and depends yes. on the situation, yeah. That's right. So speaking about the skillful performance, uh, this performance has two elements. The first part is a cognitive part of the skill that requires thought before action. When we, learn, when we are learning something, our brain is creating a pattern that afterwards will be followed by our action when we will put our skill in practice, into practice. So the second part is the motor part that requires control and efficient movement. But how can we learn and improve our skills? So there are um, a couple of steps that should be followed. The first and very initial step is uh, that the person should have a goal of what should uh, have to learn, of what should have to improve, or desired state of affairs. So uh, this should be very, very clear. Then an action plan should be made. For example, uh, what, the, what learning method will be used while the learning or improving of the skills will happen. Then practice, practice, and a lot of practice is very important when we want to learn something new or if we want to improve some skill. And then also a very crucial part of learning some skill is to have feedback. If you don't receive a feedback, please ask, ask for the feedback. Feedback is very important. And then at the end is the assessment part or the evaluation part where the main question is, how close am I to my goal that was set at the beginning? So uh, soft skills maybe are more, um, interesting um, because they are so-called employability skills. So we may be, uh, so we may got employed uh, by our um, job required skills, hard skills, but we will got uh, promoted mostly with our employability skills or with our soft skills. The process of development of the skills is a lifelong cycle process. Begins with the awareness and ends with the perfection or practicing the skill. Here is very important to be said that 
if a person is not aware that something should improve or something or, or is not willing to learn something new that we cannot start the process then all the effort will be worthless between the awareness and perfection we have a lot of practice as i said feedback as a very crucial part and a lot of a self-reflection along with the feedback part this is how we can um, um, cycle this this process for me personally developing some skill or learning overall learning or professional development is like a, is part of the mental hygiene so it's very crucial part professionally and uh, it must be done continuously and not one at a time speaking about soft skills development on a company level there there are also some steps that should be followed the first and very essential part of this process is to be developed a learning mindset but how here is very important continuously to be emphasized and stressed how the learning process will um how to say what will be the effect from the learning uh, how we will um, uh, be more efficient more successful if we are continuously learning something uh, something new the, the the step number two and also here um, as for the step number one it's very important to be mentioned that if someone is not willing to learn something new we cannot force him this is not realistic and the effort of course will be worthless the step number two is encourage self-reflection but here also self-reflection along with the feedback a person must um, uh, have the time to think about uh, what should improve and how is going to achieve that improvement but also a feedback is necessary so these two aspects are very important in order to uh, be seen what is the gap and what should be learned as a professional development the next step is the ex uh, expand knowledge and understanding here um, it's very important to have also some theoretical knowledge to attend maybe some course some training or maybe coaching or maybe to read some book even it, it, it it's uh, uh, all good and depends on the learning style of the person but then we come to the step number four which is also very very important and uh, that is to uh, provide opportunities for practice we may have a knowledge for every skill but if we do not have an opportunities to practice that knowledge i don't know if we can have the the improvement mm. and once again the feedback is crucial when we are talking about the soft skills development also as a conclusion for the soft skill part soft skills development is an incredibly slow process but why because it requires a change of personality and habit rather than a change of knowledge a change of knowledge is more simple and it's easier to be done but this process is a slow process and it requires more time. And what are, what are the pros and cons from uh, implementing development program with, on, a, on an organizational level? Regardless if it is a hard skill program or uh, a program for improving the soft skill. First, we must admit that uh, it costs uh, money, but we should not it should be seen as um, a cost rather than it should be seen as an investment because the results are uh, the results can make an impact um, it's also important to be mentioned that we cannot expect results with having only one training one development program um, this needs to be set on a regular basis and 
of course, learners, the participants of the program, the employees, if you want to say, um, have to, uh, 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 learners' efforts are also needed, but not only the efforts from the learners, but as well uh, from the company. Company must create a space and a time for learning, and this is very important. And what are the advantages? What are the benefits from having this kind of program? So we have uh, recognition from the industry, the employer, colleagues and peers, of course, um, better employment or new employment opportunities, promotion and advanced opportunities, um, increased ability to perform on the job or maybe higher skillful performance, um, when we are investing in some development program, we are building strong team and strong company leadership. And of course, higher incentives, rewards and challenges from employees that are coming from the company results, from the better uh, inputs that employees are making. Um, as a conclusion, I would say, to succeed in today's workplace, young people need more than basic reading and math skills. They need substantial content knowledge and information technology skills, advanced thinking skills, flexibility to adapt to change, and interpersonal skills to succeed in multicultural and cross-functional teams. Improving some soft skill is not easy, but is the most common reason for not hiring, not promoting, or maybe poor performance evaluation. It is said that soft skills either make your career or break your career. So my advice for the end of this uh, webinar would be pick one skill, work on it, and practice. And practice more. <laughs> yes. Thank you very much for, uh, your time and for uh, the attention. Uh, but now uh, let's move uh, to the Q and A session. Yeah. Q and A session. Yeah. Thank you. And that's a beautiful kind of end uh, for seeing it towards the end. You know, kind of uh, knowing that um, you know we've got to uh, have a very uh, um, growth mindset around what our uh, what we are capable of. You know, because uh, um, personally, I, from my own personal journey, I used to be a very fixed mindset. I didn't think I could change, but. Hey, I think I've changed. I mean, maybe some of my friends out there probably think I haven't, but uh, um, so we do have some kind of questions lined up here. Uh, I'm just going to run to them. Um, uh, we did have the kind of question from uh, Sonia uh, around, um, I think it was the question I asked actually, is that, you know, for soft skills, which is better, uh, the training or the coaching, you know? Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, um, so I, I, as you kind of mentioned, you know, it depends on the situation. I think a bit of both. Mm -hmm. um, I think I think the kind of thing I'd like to add to that is is that training is great from an intellectual perspective. You you get all the information you need, and then what you find is the emotional part of you starts to to kind of hold you back. You know, it's it's you know what to do, but you're just not mm -hmm. doing it. Mm -hmm. yeah. With the coaching, you can put what you have gained from the training, maybe. So yes. maybe uh, it is very. Um, uh, it's easier to start with the training to, to gain some maybe theoretical knowledge to have yes. some background and then to put your knowledge into practice using the coaching method. Yes, that's right. And, uh, and my experience of, of coaching uh, and being coached myself, it's been a huge uh, impact for me. I mean, I've lot, learned lots of skills and techniques. So I really encourage people to find somebody that can, uh, can coach them uh, as part of their kind of learning, but also um, you know, uh, maybe find a professional coach out there because, you know, the skill, it is a particular skill set. Um, so thank you for that question. Um, uh, uh, oh, so I think it was Sophia, actually. I, I said Sonia. I do apologize for that. Um, uh, Sonia now ha had a question around, do we require more soft skills as college students or as employees? Mm, interesting question. So, um, I would say that soft skills development uh, is continuous process. Maybe it starts with our education, but uh, it should be put in practice, all that we have learned um, in the, um, at the workplace. 
in the uh, in that context it is very uh, is very how to say you can see if someone has the soft skills or, or it possess the soft skills or not but um, for example um, uh, from my personal experience when I was um, in college at, at the university I was very active in the NGO sector and that was the place and the platform in which I was gaining uh, some soft skills input. I have uh, attended a lot of trainings and uh, this uh, helps me to build my basis for a further soft skills development. Great. But it's a continuous process. Yes, that's and right. And it never ends. <laughs> no, it doesn't actually. Um, yes, it never ends. It, it is endless. And, and I think that's the kind of fun of it. There's always something new to learn. Um, a, a, a good example of this is, uh, uh, now I'm going to share something very personal here. So when we talk about soft skills, I, would you believe it? I used to be very shy. Okay. My communication skills were terrible. And, you shy? Oh, yeah, I know. I cannot believe this. <laughs> <laughs> and and so the, what one of the things I did there to kind of practice that soft skill was that I used every situation I could find to practice the the, the skill of communicating. So um, I have a little sport that I I conduct when I'm out in public. I f I see people that I don't know, and I see how I can get to talk to them. I, I you know and, and try to engage in a conversation find something interesting and common and then just engage in a conversation and that i, I find that tends to build uh, again an example of building a soft skill by just practicing and practicing you're going to get some terrible moments where people are going to tell you to go away but you know it, it every situation is 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 a, is a practice opportunity really mm -hmm. you know, you know. yeah right excellent um so uh, we have a question here from uh, maya um is the ability to teach guide and mentor others part of a person's nature or or a person can be taught uh, this through practice so i believe that um um it's a lot of practicing work here but the most important thing for a person is to be willing to teach, to be willing to transfer her or his knowledge. So this is very cu crucial. So um, maybe the right, the right answer would be that you must possess something about it. You must have a trigger. But if you don't develop that ability, you will never be a great mentor, teacher, or Yes, Coach, yes, I, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a great answer. Um, um, so, yes, yeah, some of us have uh, natural traits or abilities, and uh, the, t the practice and the coaching and the et cetera, et cetera, self reflection amplifies it. It becomes the magnifying glass of those things that you've been gifted with, you know? Um, so, yeah, I think that's, uh, that's good. And again, um, you know, uh, I, I've seen some great examples of people learning things, um, you know, uh, how to teach. Uh, from scratch and just kind of practice. Um, so we've got another question here. Um, Simona, uh, I have a question about intelligence. How mm -hmm. does nature and nurture affect intelligence? What impact does that have? Mm -hmm. Good Very question. interesting question. And a lot of studies have been uh, done in terms of the research about the intel uh, intelligence. So the studies have shown that intelligence, intelligence is one of our um, one of the personality aspects that mostly is um, uh, part of the genetic. And this was proven by a lot of researchers made by uh, made with twins, identical twins, and um, but also I will add that. Uh, depends on the genetic part. Also, the genetic part is a base, but you may achieve, you can achieve the, 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 the final goal only if uh, there is an interplay between uh, the activity and the uh, nurture, the environment, the stimulation yeah. that the person receives. Yeah, beautiful. And uh, yeah, so uh, I, I guess that's an interesting question actually uh, simone has asked here because uh, some of mm, us feel like, yeah that's a really good one because um, sometimes people think that they're not intelligent and they're not fit for something um so i i, I this seems like a bit of a confession for me actually so i'm going to share a confession here i actually failed school you know i really struggled at school and um and it was only afterwards that um 
through kind of perseverance and knowing that I could nurture myself and other people nurturing me to kind of learn those skills. So, so uh, I'm, I'm not the sharpest. Uh, do you, I don't know have, if you have this saying in uh, Macedonia, the sharpest tool in the box. Mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm not the sharpest tool in the box, but with practice, I think you can learn the skills. Mm -hmm. It just takes a little bit longer, you know? So, um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. hey, hey, if I can do it, anybody can do it, you know? So, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, there is all, uh, also one inspiring story, and that is the story of the very famous um, athlete, Bilma Rudolph. I don't know if you have heard about her. Uh, she was born prematurely and uh, she was always a sickly child, let's say. So okay. at the age of four, she uh, contracted infantile paralysis um, caused by the polio virus, affected, affecting her left leg and foot, which were uh, weakened and starting to become deformed. Mm. Uh, the prognosis was that she would spend her life in bed. But once a week, her mother drove 90 miles round trip to a Nashville hospital for therapy on a Rudolph's twisted leg. Her brothers and sisters took turns doing a massage um, to her leg every day. With intense and constant physical therapy, Rudolph was walking again by age of 12. Wow. At the age of 16, Rudolf won a bronze medal in the sprint relay uh, in the 1956 uh, Melbourne Olympic Games. And uh, four years later, she was uh, at the Summer Olympics in Rome. She created Olympic history by becoming the first American woman to win three gold medals in track during a single Olympic Games. Wow. After her extraordinary achievements in the Olympic Games in Rome, Rudolf was being hailed through the world as the fastest woman in the history. Imagine that. Wow. And just um, about every nation had a nickname for her. At home, she was the Tornado. Tornado. To the Italians, she was La Gazella Negra, uh, the Black Gazelle. And to the French, she was La Perle Noire, the Black Pearl. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it just shows, doesn't it? You know, you, you, if you stick to it and, and, you know, you can nurture yourself uh, through help of others nurturing you as well, you know, so that's a very in, uh, inspiring story. Um, oh, we've got uh, some more questions here. Actually, we've got a bit of a tsunami of questions. Um, so, uh -huh. yeah. Okay. So Ilya, thank you, Ilya, for your question. So what, why, uh, why should companies dedicate time for professional learning other employees shouldn't that be done in their own personal time oh yes this is a good Ooh, one this is a good one but now i think that um every individual success in terms of the professional development is a company's success as well so um we should not be seeing this as an individual or um, um group uh, effort it should be done mutually, it should be a joint effort. And only if this will be seen as, uh, as a joint effort, uh, the results will be inevitable. This means that uh, we should have both. We should have employees that will use the personal time and effort to achieve something, but also they should feel the company support. Yes. They should feel the company support if the company says, for example, we will, you can dedicate, for example, two or three hours or four hours per week or one day per week at maybe some period to learn something new because this will bring success not only for you, but for the company as well. So yeah. it's a joint effort and should be seen as this. Uh, also, there is, um, uh, uh, it happens that, uh, employee uh, maybe can see this um, i can i do not want to learn um, anything in my private time if i should improve something it should be done uh, while i'm at work that is not a constructive attitude as well mm. so that is why uh, it should be seen as a joint taper it should be used a personal time as well but as well as a company um, uh, time and should be uh, allowed to, yeah. to, for an employee to have also some time uh, at the working hours, during the working hours, to learn something new. 
that's right i think it's a it's a reciprocal relationship um, yes um it is. And uh, I, I've worked with companies where they have allowed that space. I think some companies uh, allow you to do projects or kind of learning in, in their time, a certain percentage, um, you know, the likes of Google and stuff where uh, some of your time is spent learning uh, or developing a tool as part of that is learning. That actually turns out to be a, a side effect of it being a, a new business avenue. You know? <laughs> of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. right. So, um, so it's, it's interesting when companies do do this. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, mm -hmm. um, what goes around comes around, you know? Yeah, that's right. I mean, I, I must it's admit. the same here. Yeah. 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 Um, so yeah, uh, the, uh, by, by having that time given to you, I mean, if a company does that, I mean, it's just kudos, you know, I think the, you know, the company, uh, goes up in a few notches from in, in my mind. Um, Anna's got a question here. Oh, this is a good one. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. can, can creativity be learned? Oh, that is very interesting question. Um, I would say that creativity can be improved and bring to a higher level with a lot of exercise and new techniques and methods. So, um, yes, I believe that creativity can be learned and can be improved. Brilliant. Yes, that's good. Do you like, like the that. answer, Anna? <laughs> yes. Yeah, sure. Yeah, she likes that. Yeah, I think that's good as well. I think anything, I, um, a good example of that is my doodling in, uh, in my logbooks, you know, when I'm in meetings to keep myself in the meeting. Mm -hmm. um, and I've learned to become an artist. I'm, I, I like to draw and stuff like that. So I think it mm -hmm. can be learned. So creativity can be expanded. I think we've all got it in us. It's a part of a human mm -hmm. trait, you know, mm -hmm. um, we're just going to exercise it. We've got another question here from Ilya, but before we do that, uh, we've got one here from Sanja, Sanya, Sonia. Sanya. Sanya. Sonia. Sanya. Sanya or Sonia, okay. Yeah, it's the, it's the J thing going on, the Macedonian J thing going on with the English. Uh, which soft skill is critical and most important in your opinion? Wow, that's a big question. Mm -hmm. uh, so which skill, uh, soft skill do you think is most important and prevalent uh, for your career success? Well, first of all, for me personally, it's very important for one, for a person to have a positive attitude, positive approach and to be willing to embrace change. To uh, when something new comes to not say, no, 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 I can do it. Oh, I have never, I have, uh, I, I do not have experience with this and so on. So change management, embracing change, having positive attitude, this all is very, this all mixed is very crucial for professional success. Yes, yes, that's that's a good one actually. In fact, there are a lot I, of additional skills yeah. as well. Yes, but but for me, this is very important. Yes, I think I totally agree. In fact, in my in my uh, uh, library here, what uh, in front of me and behind me, there is a book here called uh, uh, by Carol Dweck. I don't know if you've read it, her material uh, called mm -hmm. My Mindset, and it talks about uh -huh. the growth and fixed mindset and uh, that one was quite a it was one of my gateway books realizing that i wasn't stuck in stuck in the, the the way my mind was working the conversation we have with ourselves has a huge impact on how we approach what you know our challenges so good question there um mm -hmm. and then uh, Thank you. circling back around got about five minutes left so uh, it's got i think it'd be a nice uh, closing uh, question in addition to my previous question Ilya says <laughs> can you can you not ex can you not expect a musician to learn and practice while in a concert? Mm, you want to, sorry, once again, can I, sure. I, I, in addition to the previous question, uh, can you not expect a musician to learn and practice while in a concert on the job, basically? No, I cannot expect no uh, the, a musician, but not only the musician. Every employee, regardless of its uh, vocation and profession, should practice, should learn new things in order to be successful. Mm -hmm. You cannot accept to have the same knowledge as from um, where you have started. You must, um, every person must be aiming to achieve more, to be more and to gain more knowledge and practice. Yes, yeah. Um, it's interesting actually, but if taking the musician analogy, uh, if you showed up uh, at a concert to do, like for example, if I came on with my violin and I've never played the violin before, you know, I mean, I'd give it a good go because that's my kind of character. But um, I, I guess there might be people out there that would learn under that pressure very quickly. 
uh, but um, I would definitely need that practice to, to get in because I'd probably get beaten up uh, once I started playing the violin. The, the rest of the concert would, uh, would, uh, would uh, t take uh, exception to my bad playing. And um, so, yeah, I guess you do need a kind of some level of practice, a kind of critical mass of ability to be able to then do it on the job because otherwise the kind of cost of it. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, so that's an interesting yeah. question, actually. I, I wonder if anybody has turned up to a concert and learned from scratch, you know? Um, yeah, that's a good one. So yeah, thank you for your questions. Uh, thank you for your question, Ilya. Um, hopefully that's, that's helped you in, in, uh, in some way. Um, and uh, I think, I think that's kind of come to a nice close. We're nearly at the top of the hour. So, uh, thank you very much, Frasina, for your time. Thank you very much for audience for your questions. Uh, thank some you really very good much ones for my there. side as well. Thank yeah. you very much. And, um, and uh, I, I just want to kind of close on a, on, a, on a song. I don't know if people have heard this before, which was the, uh, a song by The Verve. Um, and it's uh, Bittersweet Symphony. And in the lyrics, he, he sings, No change, I can't change. Mm. I am here in my mould, you know. So I guess the kind of learning from this webinar is, is that you're not stuck in your mould. You can decide to change it. So hopefully this inspires you to change something. In fact, I'm going to challenge the audience out there. Find something that you think you're stuck with uh, and, you want, and you think you can nurture it. Pick it, practice it and change it. Mm -hmm. Thank, thank you. you very much for the great point, uh, TC. Uh, and thank you all for your active participation and for your interest to participate on this webinar. Thank you very much. And don't forget to register for um, our newsletter uh, where we uh, uh, issue uh, uh, notices around new webinars and podcasts. And, uh, and if you have any kind of comments, please please email us, um, uh, you know, and we'll, I, th I think we'll be sharing the presentation as well, won't we, uh, Frazina? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yes, yeah. It will so, be my pleasure. So, so everybody who attended will, will get that sent to them. Um, so thank you for that. Thank you all.